Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dead Talk, where we take a deep dive into the anthology series, The Dead of Night. We are here with Episode 3 director, Brady Bynum. Your episode is titled Invasive Species. Yep, thanks for having me. I mentioned this before. The cool thing about this anthology is that we have different genres in this, but yours stands out because yours is the only science fiction one, correct? Right, right. Yeah, it's, uh, I would say it's science fiction-esque. Uh, it's kind of my favorite genre, so I thought it'd be cool to try and infuse both of them together. Talk about talk about the location where this takes place in, because I think if you like if you have all the lights on, mm. it would be like a pretty boring location. Oh, totally. But the way that it's lit and the way everything's set up, it's pretty cool. I think it was the third one we filmed of uh, the entire series, and uh, I had a different job at the time. I was a lifeguard in Port Aransas, and so you know. <laughs> I'd been working there all through college. And so the whole time working there, you know, I'd be daydreaming, cleaning or something. And I'd always see certain parts in there with the lights off early in the morning. And I'm like, man, this would be cool to film something here. Like whether it's like, you know, an intense drama scene or anything really. And I was like, you know, it'd just be really cool. And so when we got this whole thing started, I just, I was like, you know, I think it'd be cool. And so Jake, our cinematographer came and we kind of blocked it out and, you know, it's it's just painted white, put white walls, and everything's concrete. There's no AC, there's no heat in there, and there's only that one glass like panel window, like yeah. the stained, weird shaped window, which was really cool. We thought, and yeah. Uh, yeah, we I asked the city of Port Aransas if they could leave it open for us after closing hours, and they said, yeah, well, we even have a cop come out and sit to make sure that no one bothers us, and we filmed throughout the night. I think we filmed till like two or three in the morning every night there, so. Wow. Yeah. Was there something that you wanted to do since this is like science fiction science fiction esque? Uh is there something that you wanted to do that you probably that that somebody talked you out of doing? Like did you want a giant spaceship or something and they were like, No, we can't do that, man. Uh <laughs> no, not necessarily. Um I, I saw I I, I watched a lot of interviews and you know, uh, I took some advice from Steven Spielberg and talking about the very first Jaws movie and he said the scariest part about Jaws is you never see him but you know he's there. And so I kind of wanted to take that and apply it to the aliens in a way. And so I thought it'd be really cool if, you know, you hear them and you never see them and you get to see what they do to the humans in a way. And also, you know, if you go back and rewatch the movie, you listen to the room tone. I wanted the room to feel alive. I wanted the place they were in to feel alive. So I wanted that room to almost feel like that's a room on one of the alien spaceships. And we're hearing the humming of the alien spaceship engine like hovering okay. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. so um no one really talked to me out of anything there were a few scenes that uh you know i wanted to have more people just randomly showing up uh in full street clothes with black gunk coming out yeah. of them <laughs> uh there were a few scenes that i wanted to add some more and you know they told me you know this would be great if this was just a downhill film and i feel like it's very downhill like from start to finish it's just straight up nonsense and yeah I think I was able to do everything that I wanted on it. So what was uh what what did y'all use for the black stuff? Uh, <laughs> so it's it's a really funny story. We I, I tried looking up different things, and then I was like, you know what? Let's just use like Hershey chocolate syrup. Well, then I was like, oh, it's gonna come out brown. And so I was like, you know, maybe we can get some food dye and maybe make it darker. So we added some blue and kind of mixed it up and made it darker. And which is really funny, it's because like I didn't put two and two together that food dye stains. <laughs> And so one of the first takes we went to do the stuff coming out, the actress's teeth were just caked in blue. <laughs> and so then we started adding a lot more chocolate to it. And it's still a little brown, but I think it works. It's kind of like a motor oil kind of color. And uh, yeah, just Hershey's chocolate. Well, yeah, I think it I think it works really well. Like watching it, you're like, dude, that, 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 that looks gross. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it does not look good at all. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, the thing that stands out about yours is the sound and the lighting. Like it's really, it's really cool. And then when he, when, when the characters get unsettled, like the viewers get unsettled. So it's For like, sure. yeah. Yeah. So, so I, that part was cool. Yeah. We, I don't know. I, I really wanted, I wanted to take advantage of that window that we had. And I just always imagined, I wonder if we, we hit it with a light, what it would do. And you can see it creates so many flares on the screen. And I just thought if we can make this movie look as metallic as possible and sound sort of metallic, like machine parts moving and weird ambient noises, I think that's just what really makes you feel like you're watching something that 
it, you don't even know if it's on earth, you know, it's it yeah. just something that it's just otherworldly. And I think we just capitalize on that big time. The main actor, who's, who's he? Oh, uh, that's Riley Cummings. So that's Mitchell Cummings, brother, uh, younger brother. So whenever you cast him, did you tell him like, hey, you're going to be walking around shirtless <laughs> throughout this thing? And yeah, if, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I had some uh, actors in mind, you know, I, I, I had just come off of making a, a short film myself whenever I got onto the dead of night. So I had some people in mind, um, they didn't work out. Um, and so talking with everyone, you know, we suggested Riley. And so I had, I had, I was literally just a, a text with Riley and I said, <laughs> I need you to read this. It's kind of a lot. Like your character is kind of all over the place. Uh, it's going to be cold when we film this. Uh, and just let me know what you think. And he's just sent back the thumbs up and said, I'm down. And so oh, cool. I think he was, I mean, I didn't even have to give him bar- hardly any notes on set. You know, I, he, he kind of could read what I wrote and convey it pretty well. Um, but he had a blast, I think, and I feel bad I put those the actors and actresses through a ringer because, I mean, that was the one time Corpus got hit with a freeze, and that place doesn't have, uh, like, a heat. Is that when you shot there? That's when we shot that. And so we're in there, and there's no heat, and everything's concrete. So, like, if you watch the movie, you can see his breath, and then the shower. The, the, steam, shou- the, the shower steam, scene, yeah. The shower scene. that The steam was real, and so, like, we it just happened to be that way. And so they're barefoot, and then they're in tights, and... I had this idea I wanted to make something called like a dirty sci-fi, like a wet sci-fi. And so we wanted them to be wet the whole time, their hair to be damp and like wet. So how could you? Yeah, I know. I know. It's, <laughs> I'm surprised none of them got sick. I don't know if they did, but uh, yeah. they were all great sports about it. And, you know, we had everyone brought coats. And so once all the crew started moving around, we took our coats off. And so the actors and actresses were able to like take our coats and yeah. drape them over them and stuff like that. And oh, we cool. had a lot of helping hands. So it was cool. Okay. Um, how did you get involved with the anthology? Um, I got a call from our cinematographer. I had been friends with Jake for quite a while. And he was just like, hey, we're trying to start up something. You want know, you come meet us at uh, Tapology is a local bar. And we'll kind of talk about some stuff. And, you know, originally it was supposed to go make your film and come back. And we'll talk about it. Yeah. And it just kind of, from the first set, from Welcome to the Family, we saw... I think we had 15 of us. Every director was there. And this is before we had like a lineup of directors. And so then... And this was like two years ago, right? That was two years ago. Yeah, this is yeah. this is before we even had like a whole idea theme behind everything, I feel like. We were just all making individual films and helping each other. And then uh, Jacob asked me finally, he's like, hey, do you want to direct and, and write one? Do you have a story? And I had had that... I had Invasive Species in my head for a while. And I was like, yeah, I do actually. It's kind of long. I was like, but I think I can cut out a lot and make it. I think mine's the longest of the series. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it might or might not, might not be. But um, Yours might be. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it's 20-minute running time. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I ended up cutting it down, and we were able to make it. Okay. So what are you working on now? Um, <clears throat> I make a lot of music videos on the side. I make music videos for a local artist in Houston. Um, I make some music videos for a band here in Corpus. Um uh, Right now, I'm currently writing a, a new short. I don't know if I want to maybe turn it into a feature or not. Um, it's going to be a melodrama, kind of experimental. Uh, we kind of want to make it look like an 80s film, but everything in it is modern. So there's still like touchscreen phones and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I'm just currently writing and relaxing from this series for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so your episode is out now. Um, how do you feel? I feel good. I'm, I'm proud of what I can add to the series. I, I think... You know, I'm I'm able to watch that movie and have my held head up high the whole time, and I'm proud of everyone a part of it too, because it's just like we had so many helping hands. Like, uh, you know, we didn't just have one director on on set. I had Renee, one of the directors. He was my assistant director for my film, and you know, we our gaffer was Mitchell. Mitchell directed and wrote his own one, and you know, shout out Mitchell also for well for that film because the the light panning in the window. The only way that would work is if someone was out there and it's 20 degrees and raining and windy. And so Mitchell was out there doing it. And so zero yeah. complaints from him, which was awesome. And so, yeah, yeah, I was just, I'm proud of everybody and I just feel good. I'm ready for people to see this. Okay. Um, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Brady Bynum Films, all lowercase, no spaces. Um, and then just Brady Bynum on Facebook. And I don't really get on Facebook too much to... I use Instagram for like content and stuff like that. I post my dogs and stuff. So, (laughs) (laughs) all right. Well, cool. Well, uh, thanks for coming by. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. It's awesome.